Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Yes, I've got a little window here. This is patch 3645 beta. And I want to just run through this for a quick explanation for everybody. Um, it would be very helpful if you could play with the FAF beta patch, which if you go to the client and you look at the find games tab, there's an FAF beta and an FAF. Everything that I talk about in this video is in the beta and it is some amazingly good changes, but we need bug fixes um, or testing just to make sure that everything is working properly. So play this out. It's not going to drastically change your play experience and there are some good things in it. And then if you do have problems or if you want to talk about the changes that have been made, simply go to, let me pull it up here, the forum, which is uh, forums.faforever.com. And then you can go to general discussions and balance discussions and everything is being discussed in here as far as what is happening in the balance patches. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump through this. The biggest and most important change is the ACU tack launchers. And I love this. I have been begging for this change forever. And it has finally come about. The missile hit points are down to two from three. So the ACU TML is still stronger than the stationary TMLs, but it is not so strong that it can blast through a TMD to kill a target behind the TMD. So that is a good change. The flying height now does not have that super high angle, so the buzz kills for UEF will be able to effectively kill these missiles. They're not broken like they've been in the past. The cost is increased by 500 mass, so you can't drop that upgrade in the first four minutes of the game. The minimal range has changed to 15 as opposed to 5, so you can't shoot someone point blank with a 3 area of effect missile. You only have 2 area of effect and it has to be 15 ticks away. So that is an amazing change as well, and then muzzle velocity to 7 for all of these launchers. So that means that the UEF, the Seraphim, and the Seraphim SCU TAC launchers will basically behave the exact same way, and none of them will be as extremely overpowered as they have been in the past and that makes me so happy I cannot I can't begin to express anyway that that right there just this one change makes it worth playing the beta now let's buzz through the rest of them cyber and TMLs can now no longer kill TMDs the TMDs have a special armor type now and a TMD of any faction except Aeon will survive a single cyber attack missile hit if they have full HP so that means a cyber and TML can't just blow away all of your defenses the TMLs had friendly fire removed, so there is no more team killing with TMLs. That is another good change. The SCUs, couple of changes on these, all of them for the better. SCUs now leave wreckage at 81% value like any other unit. So dumping a whole bunch of mass into SCC use and then throwing them at the other person's base is now no longer a risk-free investment if you lose those SACUs on their side they will get the mass from them so you have to be wary of that additionally the hitbox was fixed it's a hot fix so it's probably not perfect but lasers will hit SACUs more reliably. So you're not going to have that stupid glitch where you can run an SACU beside a Monkey Lord or a Galactic Colossus and they can't kill the freaking thing. That is amazing. Additionally, there's now a resource allocation preset on the Quantum Gateway. But by the same token, um, the adjacency, I, I don't see it right off the bat, but I'll get to it in a few minutes. The adjacency bonus was decreased for quantum gateway. So that means you can't get overpowered eco by building resource allocation presets off of a quantum gateway next to two mass extractors with mass fabricators all the way around it. So that is not going to be overpowered. And then I'm not going to go over all the exact costs and changes, but basically the gun upgrades and the shield upgrades have increased costs and increased build times. So now you're not going to get those stupidly overpowered UEF SACUs. Um, the shield generator has gone down in HP and overall it's just awesome changes. It, it is a good good thing. So SACUs are still a strong unit. You definitely need to build them. They're not as bad as they were before but now they're not overpowered. And then hover tanks. We've been having some major problems 
with the hover units because it's gotten to the point where they're almost as strong or stronger than some of the navies. And what has been done is the hover tanks now have their full speed on land. So you can still use them as a fast raiding unit, but they have a speed roughly the same as land tanks on the water. When you hit water, their speed goes down to three. So that means these guys and the hover for Seraphim, the speed is now reduced on water and they cannot overwhelm navies any longer. Um, now, one of the thoughts that I had when I saw that change was, well, now the Aeon is going to... Um, the Aeon's going to be screwed because their hover tank can't get places and their frigate is by far the worst. Well, the Aeon frigate has also been changed. We'll get to that, so don't don't get angry over it. Um, tech 2 and Tech 3 changes, not anything super important. The Autumn did get a .1 speed boost, which doesn't sound like much, but it will make a significant difference in how this behaves, and I think it will strengthen the Autumn a little bit. Little tweaks at a time. That's how you balance. You don't take leaps and bounds, and this is somewhat of a hot fix so you know keep that in mind but it will make things better and then the harbinger there was a lot of complaints about um, the harbinger being very overpowered in the early game the build power has been increased by quite a bit the veterancy has been bumped up so it doesn't vet so fast and then it can no longer fire while reclaiming so the harbinger is still going to be a really strong early t3 unit but it's not going to be as overpowered as it was um moving along to sniper bots um snipe the firing randomness while moving was lowered on the seraphim and aeon sniper bots and that is to help them counter uh, um not Othams, bricks and percivals like they're supposed to and then a little fix for the uef t3 mobile anti-air uh, muzzle velocity up and accuracy improves so it hits reliably like the other factions. Here's the other change that I'm very excited about. The Summit, the UEF T3 Navy is so extremely overpowered that basically not having T3 UEF on the field in a naval map is doom. Like once UEF starts rolling, you can't stop them. And to help with that, the mass cost, build time, energy cost were all increased for the summit. Um, you've got a 1,500 increase in mass cost, a an 8,000 increase in power cost, and the build time going up from 28,800 to 33,000. So that's going to be a huge help right there. You're going to have to have a lot more build power to roll these summits off your assembly line and a bit more mass invested. And then the area of effect is down from three to two, which is going to help them not just obliterate swaths of units like they were doing before. Summit is still going to be by far the strongest battleship because of that range, and it keeps the same damage it had. It's just going to be harder to get on the field in so great a quantities. The Aeon Frigate um, firing rate went up. The DPS went up. And it gained 50 hit points, which is a tremendous change because this is the most expensive frigate. And it was the most expensive for the least health and low DPS and a bad reload time and all of this other crap. So this is no longer the trashiest frigate. It's not the best. It's not the best by a long shot. But it can deal with hover and it's now relatively decent. So I'm all for that change. Another one I'm excited about, strategic bombers. These are going up in energy costs by dang close to 50%. And what this does is it bumps them up to the same power category as ASF. You will have to have, at minimum, three T2 power generators and your first resource allocation to push a strategic bomber. And you will hinder your ecoing ability if you push that early strap bomber. So... And also the build time is up. And what this does is this is going to knock the first strat time out on most maps by an additional minute or so. And that's going to give the opposing team more time to get ASF, swift winds, or large amounts of interceptors, or even T3 and a SAM down. Um, that early strat bomber won't be quite so strong. This is a change that's going to be revisited, but it, it is a good start. Corsair, I don't know if many of you knew, but in the last patch, their range was decreased. So they fired closer to the target, but with the same muzzle velocity, it basically made Corsairs impossible to dodge. Muzzle velocity went down on these. They're going to be back like they were before. 
Fixes for the Torp Bombers, I'm not going to go over all of them. Basically, you just need to know that the Seraphim Torpedo Bomber no longer sucks. And then the Solus and Skimmer both have minor tweaks to how they behave to make them hit more reliably. The Awasa, it gets the same nerf as the Zar Beam had. A lot of you remember the Zar forever if you ground fired it when ASF were attacking it. The ASF flying through the beam would be killed one shot, one kill for each ASF. The Tsar would vet instantaneously to five vet off of a couple hundred ASF. And it basically made the Tsar unkillable and all of your ASF would die if you just click that attack order. And uh, what's been done is armor's been added to the ASF where they take the same damage from everything else except... They only take 10% of true damage from the Owasa bomb and the Zar beam. And that means that one bomb from the Owasa will no longer kill ASF. So that um, stop and bomb drop on ASF passing under you can't defend your Owasa anymore. So you're going to have to use it like an actual bomber, which I say is a good thing. Also, the hover bomb has been directly nerfed. The reload time has been pushed from 10 to 14 seconds, which doesn't affect the DPS on the unit when it's in its circling pattern and behaving normally. It does add four seconds of time between hover bombs. So that gives you more time to kill the bomber. That is a direct nerf to micro abuse and a very good thing. You can still hover bomb it if you want to, but you're going to have to spend an extra four seconds and you're going to have to decide whether it's worth it or not. Then you can see here the values for the quantum gateway adjacency. That is going to nerf everything down so that resource allocation is not too powerful. Then we were having problems with T3 land uh, undercutting the T2 stage of the game because it was so easy to get T3. That build time has been bumped up, so now there's going to be a definitive T2 stage. And you're going to have to get a little bit more build power to get the T3 out. Now this number... Uh, it's not a cost increase, it is a build time increase. So you're going to need a few more engineers to pull it off effectively. You can still do super early T3 if you wish. It's just going to cost you a few more engineers and not quite as easy of a jump as it used to be at, say, the 8 or 9 minute mark. Sonar changes, not super important. Mass costs went up, um, which I do agree with, especially for Cybern since it provides stealth. But uh, other than that, you know, it, it's just there. And then a note on energy mass overflow. And I have to admit, I actually believed that this was a bug. I did not know that this was this way, but just so everyone's on the same page, resources do not disappear. And there's actually a mod for this. It's sharing eco or eco sharing mod, um, something like that. Basically, it forced a share uh, through a UI mod of any additional overflow that you had so that it would be distributed to people as they needed it. And in reality, Forged Alliance already does that. If two people are overflowing at the same time, they overflow 100% of the resources to the other two people, including the transferred overflow that they're exchanging with each other. So no mass is being lost. No power is being lost in that situation. And I was wrong about that. I believed it. Everybody was saying it, and I thought that was the case, but it is not. So you can shut off your eco-sharing mod. You can nix that correction off your list. It's an unnecessary UI mod. This is definitely functioning as it's supposed to. All right, that is the changes in a nutshell. I hope everybody is is as excited about them as I am. There is so much stuff in this hot fix that has needed to happen for like six months, and it is finally here. Just be aware, as I said before, this is somewhat of a hot fix. So if there's other stuff that needs to be discussed, hit up the forum. Um, definitely play it and test it and see what you think about it, and we'll go from here. Alrighty guys, I am going to get out of here and get my next cast online. Tune in for that and I'll see you over there.